Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm at, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Yeah, well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. This is the Valder Beebe Show hello, broadcasting hello. live. Hi, good morning. This is the Valder Beebe Show broadcasting live in Dallas, Texas. Who do I have in the studio with me? I'm Jack Vanderhei from the Employee Benefit Research Institute. And I'm Luke Vandermillen with Principal Financial Group. I want to thank you guys for joining us, and I love talking money. And my new favorite subject is retirement because my audience is made up 89%. 89.9% baby boomer women, and they have the same questions that I do. You know, did I save enough? Can I save enough? Where do I start? How do I get more? So you guys are here to help me. And if we can start with you, Luke, tell me about Principal Financial Group and how do you address that question? Yeah, at Principal Financial Group, we're one of the nation's 401k leaders, and we work with over 34,000 uh, businesses and their 4 million uh, employees to, uh, to help them save for retirement. So, you know, one of the things that we do is uh, give people really kind of straightforward guidance in terms of what they should be doing. And number one, talk to a financial advisor. Number two, take the time to calculate how much you should be saving for retirement. And number three, if you have access to a retirement plan where you work like a 401k plan, certainly take advantage of that, especially when there's a matching contribution, which most of those plans have. So those are kind of three easy steps that people could take towards uh, putting themselves on the right path towards retirement. Luke, I want to talk to you about that last one because uh, uh, you guys have been saying this for years and years, and yet people still leave money on the table. How, how, how do you get a pass that to let us know or let them know that this is the best thing that could happen to you? Yeah, th there are some who do leave that money on the table, and there are some who wait uh, on, uh, uh, l until later in their career to start saving for retirement. And, uh, and there's really a couple things. You know, we're, we're seeing awareness of retirement and the importance of retirement continuing to increase. I think the research uh, verifies that year over year. Um, but one of the things that we're seeing as a really encouraging trend is a lot of business owners, whether they're uh, small, medium, or large sized businesses, are starting to automate their plans a little bit more. So they automatically enroll employees once they become. Uh, once they are hired and automatically enroll them in their 401k plan and some even automatically increase their contributions to get to a point where they're saving adequately for retirement. So while awareness is good, there's also more kind of automated features that we're seeing becoming more and more popular and that's a really good trend. I like that. Jack, you guys conducted the survey, I'm thinking. Tell me about the survey. Well, this is our 26th annual survey. Each year we look at 1,000 workers and 500 retirees to get more information on things like their overall confidence that they will have sufficient amounts of money at retirement for a comfortable standard of living. This year we found that 21% of the workers were very confident that they'll be able to reach those goals, but the really important takeaway is that it depends on whether or not you currently have a retirement plan. 26% of those that either had a defined benefit, defined contribution, or an IRA were very confident in their prospects. But if you look at those without any of those three, without any kind of retirement plan, only 10% of those individuals were very confident that they'll have enough financial resources available for a comfortable standard of living in retirement. That makes it really interesting. I want to go back to uh, Luke. Luke, let me ask you, um, uh, do we still have pension plans? The reason why I'm asking, companies are making billions of dollars, and I'm just not singling anybody out, but you've got Google, you've got Apple, you've got Starbucks, and they're making so much money. Do they have pension plans? 
Um, you know, there are some employees who are covered by a pension plan, but but there's fewer and fewer of those out there uh, today. And if if a uh, if a company is starting a retirement plan for their employees, it is much more likely to be a plan like a 401k plan. And and really, what what that is telling us, and and the the phrase that we coined at Principal several years ago is, we've entered this era of personal responsibility where maybe your parents or your grandparents worked for one company for the course of their entire career. There was a pension plan that provided them with their retirement benefits when they stopped working. And the workers of today really have to take their own responsibility and set aside some of their own money, and the employer will generally help them in the form of a 401k plan. So we've been in this kind of shift over the last several decades from employer providing 100% of the, of the benefits in a, in a pension plan towards the more kind of contemporary form of retirement benefits like a 401k plan. And it's put more responsibility on the individual to, uh, to take action and participate in that. You know your job. I think you're telling the truth. I'll wrap up with Jack. Jack, uh, we've talked about retirement. We've talked about your survey. Did your survey look at the people who are, um, what do you call it, the minimum wage worker, the people that want to get more money, and they're making about $25,000 a year? Oh, sure. We break it out by income, as you would probably expect. Those with lower incomes have a much lower confidence. Uh, important point that we found out this year, because we ask people how much they're saving, we ask people how much they think they should be saving. Obviously, there's a large group of those individuals, lower income individuals, that know they should be saving much more, and they're not. So we asked them this year for the first time, what do you think the consequence will be of your undersaving? And we find that 14% of them just assume they're going to be able to defer retirement age. Another 13% say they have no idea. The problem with deferring the pain and not contributing enough today is every year we also ask the retirees, did you retire when you expected? And half of them say no. We were forced to retire early either because of our health or our spouse's health or because of the job market. So it's very risky to just assume that you can defer those contributions you should be putting in today until a later date. Luke Vandermillen and Jack Vander, how do I say your last name, Jack? Vanderhigh. Vanderhigh, you guys are my experts of today. I love talking money, and I know my audience must listen about it because I talk about it all the time. Thank you for being guest on the Valderibi Show. Where would you send them on the web if they want to find out more about the survey? Survey results are at ebri.org. All right. Thank you, guys. You guys know your business. Thank you for being my guest on the Valderibi Show. Thank you. Thank you.